the Gunman Raw. So we've got another masking video on today. And actually we'll get the masking done and the base coat down in this video. So as you can see now we've got the, the base coat set up ready to go. So yeah, let's get into it. Um, pretty nice car this one. What is it? A 420i M series BMW. I don't know why this car keeps locking itself. I never locked it. It must be one of those settings on it. I didn't even unlock it either and it looks like it unlocked itself. <laughs> Just by being in my hand. Sometimes you can have like too much technology in a car nearly. But yeah, like recently I've just gone and bought a C-Class Mercedes-Benz. I actually mainly bought it for my missus, but I've kind of always... I've, I've been talking about it for a while on the channel, so many of you guys won't be that surprised that I ended up getting one. But um, yeah, so it's a, a 2001 C200 um, compressor. So W203 is the model number and um, yeah it's kind of crazy because I, I put a, a head unit like an aftermarket head unit in it, a Sony one um, and a reverse camera because it didn't have a reverse camera and since I've done that it's like it's pretty much exactly the same as my 2014 Corolla so yeah apart from that head unit all the tech was that far ahead of time you know <laughs> compared to the rest of the market I guess like it's got yeah pretty much everything else that my Corolla's got that needs a bit more of a sand that's unlike me to miss a spot like that got a bit of 1000 grit here This one here, I think it's just a private job. I don't think it's a, um, I don't think it's a car yard job. Um, there was like one, two little dents there, and a little chip here, and another little chip there. So I, I repaired and primed it up last night, and prepped it up this morning, and we were ready to go. So. Yeah, look, usually I would prefer these things taken out, but you just got to do what you got to do sometimes. I don't, I think sometimes the, the panel beaters don't even like taking certain parts off brand new cars because they're probably worried about breaking them. Yeah, this car here is all in Chinese, like the, the user interface language is all Chinese. My boss is Chinese, he's, he's really rich though, like, and I guess because of that, like some of the signage around this place is in Chinese and obviously there's actually quite a lot of rich Chinese people here in Australia, so he's managed to sort of capture some of that market, I guess being that he's Chinese and he can communicate with them during the process but yeah my boss he owns um, like a car rental business he owns um, tow trucks I think two or th I think two tow trucks now but then he's just ordered another one like a bigger one or something like that he owns like um, two aeroplanes two light aeroplanes which is kind of crazy. Pretty cool. But yeah, they're very generous and like totally not tight asses either. Like he's rich but not a tight ass. You know how like a lot of the rich people can be tight asses? The fridge is just full of snacks and drinks and like this morning I opened up the fridge to put my lunch in and there's like fresh Daniel's donuts in there a full tray you know and just to help yourself there's yeah as I say like snacks um, there's a full like wall just full of snacks and that and it's you know you, because we're allowed to do as much overtime pretty much here as you want 
So, you know, sometimes if you are doing a bit of overtime, you do get a little bit bit hungry and oh, yeah, grab a little rice cracker or, you know, like a little chocolate or whatever they've got in there. I guess it's one of those little things, but it, it really makes you feel your work is a bit more appreciated, I guess. Yeah, they've got like tea and coffee and all that kind of stuff. Even bananas, you know, like they've usually got some bananas in there. So yeah, it's really, really a pleasure to be working here. I'm, you know what, like, I, I don't like holding grudges against other people and, um, I, look, the way I say it, like, if you're happy where you are now, like, the situations in your past are what got you here, you know what I mean? So that's why I don't, <clears throat> I don't know, whatever, yeah, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm just rambling shit. it's a dying art you know and yeah like it's it's true it's not just a dying art it's basically a dead ass it, it really is like there might be a few people who still know how to do it but it's definitely not widely used and I say lead loading is not widely used for a good reason like um, I thought he was implying that like lead loading was better or good and um, I left a comment on his video I'm like yeah but like it's dead for a reason, man. Like, there's there's no advantage to it. And um, but like most of the comments were kind of saying or implying that like lead is the best way to do it. And so no, it's not, man. Give me body filler any day. Like, give me a lightweight body filler over a highly toxic, heavy lead, lead loaded inside my car. Like, I'm doing up my Tirana at the moment. I'm digging all the lead out where I can. You know. Oh, there's a few bits where I did decide to leave it in because it wasn't doing any harm and I'd rather not be exposed to the toxic lead but let us know your thoughts like I ha I remember having this apprentice um, he was an apprentice panel beater years ago when I was over there in Perth and like he was only a first year so you know obviously he'd been fed this kind of or he, he didn't fully understand or maybe he did and he just thinks differently but He's like, oh, I want to do a restoration on this car, blah, blah, and I'm not going to put any bog in it. It's all going to be lead. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why? Like, what advantage have you got using lead? I mean, it looks like it looks cool. It looks professional, but I mean, I, I just don't see any real advantage to it. Like there's, yeah, as I say before, like there's a damn good reason why the industry has moved on from it. Yeah, let me know if you think lead is better than um, standard body filler. Um, <coughs> they're still just um, because I bought that Mercedes, I've kind of had a couple of weeks kind of half not working on the Tirana that much if you know what I mean so um, I guess it, on one one side it's it's kind of been good just to have a little bit of a break and you know it's just it's just project car so it doesn't I don't need it it's, I'm not in a hurry um, but I mean I'm still keen to get it done I haven't I definitely haven't lost the passion for it or I don't think I've lost my momentum either, you know, like I went out there last night and had a look and I, I set a panel up ready to ready to start stripping the outside of um, and I might even get that into epoxy primer tonight or just get it ready to epoxy prime. Um, but yeah, as I say, like I did the head unit upgrade on that uh, C200 Benz and I reckon it did really well, hey, like 
I guess it was kind of all plug and play, but yeah, I managed to get like the fascia, all, all the proper fascia, the plastic parts. I bought it online. Um, yeah, there was a place that sold the, the correct fascia for it. So it all, it all looks, it looks like it's meant to be there. I guess that's what I meant to say. Um, plastic, let's go with the plastic. performance pro clear on this one we had an uneven number of hardeners there for the performance clear so like we had an extra hardener so I just said to the other painter I said I'll oh, order in another clear like you're not gonna you're not gonna do a credit on something that we bought like a month or so ago you know so um, I say that because we are going to be changing over to the extreme clear which is the K9600, um, the, the performance clear is K9590, that's just the product code of those two clear coats. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I've, I'm at the point where I'm like, standoffs don't make bad clears, like all of their clears are good. Even the entry level standard clear, the stand up standard clear, that's awesome. That I used that for years over there in Perth, so you guys are probably relatively familiar with it. But again, just another easy to use, good quality, not as I say, not quite as good as the premium ones that I'm using now, but um, yeah, for what it is, it's, it's a great clear. As I say, like anything with the standoffs label on it is gonna be pretty good stuff. Um, I do actually like to tight, tighten these up down the bottom here for what it's worth. We, um, we changed those floor filters in the booth here last week and boy, does it make a big difference. I'm gonna start doing them once a month well, and I have been doing them once a month for, for the last three months anyway, so I'm going to continue to keep doing it once a month. But I tell you what, I was a bit pissed off this morning because it's like, what is it? I can't even remember the exact date, but as of making this video, I think it's like, yeah, the 12th of, no, it'd be like the 15th of November, which should be more hot than cold, you know, like usually the start of spring is more cold than hot because you're coming out of winter. The end of spring should be more hot than cold, but man, it's raining outside, it's eight degrees, it's freezing. It's just, ah, I tell you what, it's annoying. Um, yeah, Melbourne weather for you. I guess still kind of missing Perth there to a certain extent, but I mean, there are, there are um, definitely things that are better about Melbourne. Like, well, one thing being the pay rate. Put it into a percentage, it would be... Yeah, it would be like... Nearly 50% extra compared to what I was on over there in Perth. But like a massive, massive pay increase I've had. So I'm definitely not complaining on that. Certain things are more expensive over here, like accommodation. But I've found that food is actually cheaper over here in Melbourne. Um, yeah, like if you if you want to go and buy a meal when you're dining out in Perth, it's quite expensive. But in saying that, like I found that like the supermarkets they're pretty much the same. So if, you, if you're just going to be eating at home, like it doesn't really make that much difference. So. But yeah, in saying that, I have found myself more likely when I'm living in Melbourne to go out and, and, and eat out now I'm in Melbourne. I actually get, I get noticed a fair bit now, like, uh, I don't know, once a month minimum nearly, like when I'm just walking around the streets with my family, I'll just have someone be like, oh, the gunman. And last Friday, it was, it was actually my um, fifth wedding anniversary with my wife and um, 
we went down to have like a nice Greece, Greek, Greek rest. We went to a nice Greek restaurant and as we were walking around after, um, some guy just say, hey, Gan Man, he's like, yeah, I watch your videos. So yeah, it, it kind of happens relatively often, but it's, it's okay. Like there's like, I guess, the amount and the kind of people, like they're working class people, so they're not like annoying people, if you know what I mean. Like, it would be annoying if you're walking down the street, like Justin Bieber, and you've got like 16 year old girls, like screaming like mad at you. Like, you know, that would be annoying. But um, yeah, just, you know, the average working class type dude, oh yeah, I know, I know your videos, that's, it's not so bad, you know. down at Bunnings there um, getting some stuff in the morning actually on the way into work when I was just started doing up my Tirana and I asked the guy behind the counter if, if he knew where something was and he goes oh do you do YouTube videos and I'm like yeah and he, like, it turns out like he hasn't been watching me lately but he's like yeah man I used to watch you years ago so that's yeah, kind of cool Some more masking tape. That one's just about gone too. So. Mercedes man to me like I can appreciate the car for what it is don't get me wrong but it doesn't it doesn't really do that much for me these BMWs you know I've never really been that into the BMWs I guess partly the styling and I don't know and I tell you what that C200 of mine it's a it's an awesome car so uh, 125,000 kilometers on it which would be, I guess, in miles, what does that be, like 80,000 miles for, for my American viewers, something like that, don't quote me on that, but um, around there. And at, yeah, $8,000, it, it's one of those, I always knew the kind of Benz I was looking for, something that had been an old dude's car, you know, like some old guy, that it was his pride and joy, you know what I mean? and I got exactly that it was some old guy he actually passed away two years ago and and the family held on to the car and they just decided it was time to get rid of it <coughs> um, yeah so like the rego the registration is just about due so they just decided look you know it's it's never really getting used it wasn't getting taken out so it was just time to get rid of it um, so that's where we came along and, and picked it up for, I think, a pretty reasonable price. Fair, like fair on both accounts, you know. The poor, the poor old, um, the missus, so they, they were an old Italian couple. I bought it off, well, the, the mum, but the son was helping, you know. Um, and 
and she, the poor old thing was crying like the, the old lady was crying to see it go, you know, because obviously attached some memories attached to the to the husband. Yeah, so I just I assured her, I said, look, it's going to a good home, you know, and it's it's gonna get looked after, so It's a very, very nice, smooth car to drive. I really enjoy driving it. Just a, just a little bit tighter than the Corolla, like the steering and, um, I don't know, just the acceleration and brakes, just very sort of smooth. And I even had someone on Instagram say, man, you'd be surprised, because Look, a lot of people are kind of scared off. They wouldn't even look <coughs> at a used Mercedes, right? Um, for what it is, it's nearly a no-brainer, you know what I mean? It's nearly too cheap for what it is, but I think a big part of that is that most people literally won't even look at used BMWs or Mercedes or Europeans because they're, European they're kind of scared off of them. Um, you know they got that name for being an expensive car but um I, yeah as i say like one guy said man you like parts for those are cheaper than ford and holden and even all your service um parts like there's a couple of websites he put me onto which i i took note of and he was right like all the service components and stuff like that it's all it's all like quite cheap to be honest um and I don't think they seem that hard to work on. Well, I, just for what I've done so far, but yeah, some of it might be a little bit complicated, but from from just what I've done, like putting in that, that head unit, it seems pretty, pretty straightforward. And there's guides online, you know, like you go on YouTube, there's loads of videos on how to do, you know, most of the work on them. And I guess they're kind of getting older now. So as time moves on, there's people going to upload more videos on them, I guess, aren't they? Um, when there's a new car, there's only a certain amount of people who have access to, it, to that new car, isn't there? So what are we going to do with this? This is what I'm a bit sort of concerned about. Because I don't think I'm, because it's, it, have to sit in there a bit. I don't think I would get any fine line tape in there. I'm just gonna have to do this and then peel it off as soon as I finish painting. Sitting there too. 
Uh, as always, I'm going to be wearing my respirator when I am prep soling. I don't know, I find this prep soles, it just started getting really um, strong on the nose and I, I get this burning sensation in my nose from the, um, from the prep sole fumes.